features program revisions and updates with uh, Tammy Pocorny and Jerry Gorsline. Who's going first? I will. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> So, once again, my name is Jerry Gorsline, and I'm the Vice Chair of the uh, Conservation Futures Citizen Oversight Committee. And I'm going to read for the benefit of the audience a memo that we supplied the commissioners updating the committee's work. The Citizens Oversight Committee is required by ordinance to review the Jefferson County Conservation Futures Program principles at least once every two years and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners for modification of the program. As the program enters, enters its sixth year of existence, it has evolved gradually with improvements to the application guidelines and form, rating sheets, and application process. Other changes the committee has made to date include increasing the number of committee seats to 11, making operations and maintenance funding available to projects requesting it, and requiring applicants to present projects in person and videotaping site visits. As you will recall, I appeared before this commission in June of this year to inform you that the committee was initiating a program review with a specific objective to increase awareness and access to the program. Ideas the committee suggested for change included addressing the high cost of appraisals and stewardship including a grant program manual and other supporting materials, and stepping up efforts to involve citizens in the committee's work. We have now completed this program review and proposed the following changes. Regarding the project valuation, the committee identified the requirement that applicants provide an appraisal for acquisitions, along with their application, as a major disincentive for ordinary citizens to participate in the program. Appraisal fees often cost in the thousands. The Jamestown Tribe, for example, paid $10,500 for an appraisal of $67,000 grant relating to the Tamano Rock Project. After much deliberation, the committee decided that in order to encourage more applications, we will allow the sponsor of any project to provide an assessment of value, a certified appraisal, or an estimate of value before any disbursement of funds for qualifying projects, however, the funding amount must be supported by an appraisal, except the final appraisal requirement will be waived for acquisitions with assessed value or opinion of value by a realtor or appraiser of under $20,000. With regard to grant program guidance documents, in order to meet the overall goal of improving communications about the program and this process, and making it more accessible to citizens. The committee requested that staff develop a program manual that would set forth the program mission, an overview of the Conservation of Futures Ordinance, and details regarding the project application, selection, and reporting requirements, as well as sample forms. Staff Tammy Pokorny used the state's Recreation and Conservation Office's policy manual as a model to develop a comprehensive manual for our program. The draft manual, soon to undergo a legal review, includes a reimbursement form and project agreement template to provide clear documentation about all aspects of the funding arrangement, requirements, period of performance, effective dates, and reporting. Finally, the committee and county staff will be hosting a series of public workshops in three locations in Jefferson County in January 2009 to encourage citizen interest and participation in the program. Staff, at least one committee member, and possibly a successful applicant will be present at each event. The dates, times, and locations for each workshop are as follows. All these workshops will be from 6 to 8 p.m. at night in the evening. The first one is in Janu on January 6th, and it will be held in Forks at the Olympic Region Conference Room, DNR Olympic Region Conference Room. Then on January 12th, from 6 to 8 p.m., we'll be at the Brennan Community Center. And on January 15th, at the Jefferson County Library in Port Hadlock. 
It is our hope that this work will enhance broad awareness and participation in our Conservation Futures program to provide, as stated in the enabling ordinance, a system of open spaces for the health, welfare, benefit, and safety of the residents of Jefferson County and the maintenance of the county as a desirable place to live, visit, and locate businesses. As Vice Chair, I'd like to cordially invite the Board of County Commissioners and all interested citizens to participate in the public workshops and to attend any of our committee meetings. Our meeting schedule and program information are always displayed on our website, at the county website. Where's the map? Tammy just put up a map that shows the geographic distribution of the various projects that have come into existence as a result of this program. And I would like to give you just a quick recap on the project annual reports we received uh, with regard to the North Gate, the North Gateway buffer property, for example. The title is now held by Jefferson County. A management plan and a philosophy have been approved. With regard to Tomales Rock Phase 1, the title is held by Jefferson County and the Jefferson Land Trust and a management plan with annual monitoring is in place. With regard to the Winona Buffer Project, it consists of eight platted lots acquired by Fee Simple Acquisition, with title held by the City of Port Townsend. A management plan has been adopted by the City in 2008. Twenty trained docents are now leading monthly walks for, for participants interested in learning about wetlands, birding, project history, native plants and wildlife, and an interpretive trail will be developed in the spring of 2009. The Land Trust will, will be providing annual monitoring. With regard to the Upper Tarboo Creek project, the easement title for that project is still pending, needing approximately $150,000 for title acquisition. Uh, the project has applied for forest legacy funds and in 2007 was ranked number two in the state, but currently the program is lacking sufficient federal funding. With regard to the Tarbu Creek Conservation Project, uh, $70,000 is still needed for easement title acquisition. An option agreement is in place, and appraisal is near completion. With regard to the Glendale Farm, county co -holding is, the county is co-holding the easement title with the Jefferson Land Trust. Additional cost of acquisition and restoration have now been identified as a State Farmland Preservation Program grant and funds also raised within the community. Easement acquisition is anticipated in early 2009 and restoration projects will begin in 2009 also. And finally, the Finn River Farm, that easement is also pending with acquisition anticipated as early as fall 2009. And on the map, there are a couple of other projects that aren't discussed here because we didn't, we, it's no longer appropriate to be submitting annual reports with regard to the Chimicum Creek and East Harbor projects. So, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, Tammy and I'd be glad to answer any further questions that you may have.